some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Well, hello and welcome back to the channel, everybody. In today's video, we have a sovereign citizen who makes a special guest appearance in a courtroom as he decides that it's uh, in his best interest not to take responsibility for his own actions while he was intoxicated. So, ladies and gentlemen, we have to forgive this uh, special Sovtard, considering he's from an completely different existence. So, well, he's still uh, liable for his actions, though, in our universe. So, let's go ahead and uh, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Bail in his case, based on his warrant history and the nature of the charge, would be $15,000 cash or bond. And... I will appoint Ms. Langley to represent Mr. Pinckney, and I'll set a hearing for Monday the 17th. I'll set it at 1.30, assuming he'll still be in custody. Hopefully, we'll have had an evaluation and results back by then. Actually, Teresa, if you'll give me that form back, I'll put the date of the hearing in there. Ed, Nisqually, your name, please. Uh, I am not. Forgive me. Forgive me. One moment. Uh, my name is what you asked yes. for. Uh, I did. No, I'm not Peyton Ansley John Milton. I'm the agent authorized to represent Peyton Ansley John Milton as written in all capital letters. Ding dong. We definitely have an uneducated Sovtard here. I mean, that's a typical Sovtard defense. I am not the man you're looking for. I am the agent representing the man you're looking for. Uh, this is not exactly the time for Jedi mind tricks, dude. Considering those only really work on the weak-minded, and uh, those Jedi mind tricks certainly worked on you, but they're not going to work on the judge. Thank you. And did somebody notify in the squad of jail that uh, there was no need to bring up Mr. Pinckney today? Yeah, um, yeah, actually, there's several people we don't need to bring up today if we've got their attention. Yeah, right then. So we don't need spillers. Okay. And I was just going to set over Feather off, so maybe we don't need that either. All right, Ms. Lane, we understand. Thank you. So no, no, uh, Mr. Featheroff and no, Mr. Spillers. Ms. In both cases, but yes, we'll set them over later in the calendar. Okay, thank you. And as to Mr. Milton, is there a competency concern, or is uh, this I, a? I, uh, I'm, um, I'm. I am not, not uh, represented by anybody besides myself. Um, in my sovereign capacity, appreciate you. I'm gonna go the Daryl Brooks route and uh, go pro se. Uh, yeah, it didn't work out for him, but you know what they always say, a man who represents himself in a court of law has a fool for a client, and you sovtards are always the biggest fools around the block. So, please continue on. Let's hear what you have to say. Thank you, Your Honor. I did have an opportunity to speak to him. I read him the reports. He was who is just... him? Hey, don't interrupt. I'm letting I read him. I read now, him. You just sit quietly. Thank you. I read him. I read him the report so that he will understand the charges against him. Um, he didn't wish to hear anything more about his rights, and he does not wish to be represented. Thank you. Well, of course, he didn't want to understand what his rights are because he believes he knows them to begin with, even though a, the average sovereign citizen does not have the capacity to understand what their rights actually are which is often why they fail so much in legal situations, because, you know what, they know their rights until it gets to the point where they don't actually know their rights, of course. All right, and as the agent for Peyton Ansley, John Milton, 
you are indicating to me that you're quite familiar with Peyton Ansley, John Milton, and that's basically you. Is that correct? There you go. See, your Jedi mind tricks didn't exactly work on the judge because, number one, he's a lot more educated than you, and number two, a lot more experience, and number three, going hand in hand with the experience, he's most likely seen a thousand people like you who uh, want to act like this in his courtroom. So, nice try, buddy. I am the agent authorized to represent Peyton Ansley, John Milton, as okay. written in all capital letters. All right. And you understand, for my purposes, though that language doesn't make any sense. So no, I do not. I understand. Okay. Well, I'm telling you that. And so I am, until you disabuse me of the motion or the notion, I am inclined to believe that you are both the agent and the person. So, and it's an I'm all not a person. I am one of the people. Thank you. Right. Okay. Thank you. All right. Oh, looky here. We have the word game semantics that these softards love to play, even though that, well, it doesn't exactly work on the intelligent-minded people who know what the actual definitions are. And here's the definition of people, you dumbass. Persons, whether men, women, or children, considered as numerous individuals forming a group. So go ahead and take those uh, semantic word games and shove them where the uh, sun doesn't shine and let the adults start talking so you can get through this as painlessly as you can. So for the record, that's my finding. Yeah, hold on. We're not done. Okay. Have a seat. You got and it. And thank you. Uh, Mr. Sharp, let me swear you in. Swear the testimony probable cause application to be the truth. All truth and nothing but the truth. I so swear, Your Honor. Okay, Mr. Sharp. So this information comes from a report of Officer Evers of the Lacey Police Department. She writes that on March 31st this year, at approximately 1353 hours, she responded to an unwanted person complaint at 7-Eleven store located at 2425 Mar Marvin Road, Northeast in Lacey. Dispatch advised a male was refusing to leave the store and was being disorderly yelling at staff. Upon arriving, Officer Evers contacted staff who advised uh, her that it was a white male, approximately 5'5", with a beard, wearing green long-sleeved flannel. Staff advised that he was intoxicated and belligerent. Uh, they advised that at one point the male stated he would be waiting outside when they got off work. Uh, the staff advised uh, that they asked the male to leave multiple times and he refused. Um, they also advised that once uh, they called the police, the mail returned to his Toyota 4Runner, and the license plate is provided here, um, and then that it was parked outside the gas station. The uh, staff provided uh, a prepaid phone and a charger that the mail had left on the floor inside. Um, staff stated that they didn't feel safe, wanted the mail trespassed. Officer made contact with the mail, immediately was able to identify him as Peyton Milton. Officer knows Mr. Milton is a local transient that lives out of his car, has had several social contacts with him. Officer Evers uh, asked Mr. Milton if he was just inside the store. He stated that he was. He stated that he was too drunk to be held accountable. Officer advised Mr. Milton that he'd be trespassed from 7-Eleven and he stated, I understand what you have to do. Mr. Milton offered uh, to manually push his car to a gravel lot about 25 yards from the 7-Eleven so that he wasn't on the property since he was too intoxicated to drive. Officer agreed and gave Mr. Milton until nightfall to push the car out of the lot. Officer provided Mr. Milton with his phone um, and he replied, can I go back in and charge it? Officer advised him that he could not charge his phone at this 7-Eleven and that if he entered the store again, he would be arrested. Officer provided Mr. Milton with a copy of the trespass form. And then at 1623 hours, staff called dispatch advising that Mr. Milton was back inside the store uh, staff advised that Mr. Milton said he was too drunk to be held accountable um, and that he left again once they called dispatch and this time he again left his cell phone in the store. Um, officer then contacted Mr. Milton. He again stated that he was too drunk to be held accountable. Um, officer noted that Mr. Payton was intoxicated but functional and able to understand the officer's instructions. Officer advised Mr. Payton, or, excuse me, Mr. Milton, um, that he was under arrest for trespass, so detained him without the incident. Problem. He was then booked into the county jail. Excuse me, the, the then the squalid jail. On the charge of criminal trespass, first degree. Is the city making a motion to revoke the deferral on the assault conviction or yes, on the assault case? Based on the new law violation, yes. 
Thank you. And let's see. Now, will I get a moment here to articulate anything? Uh, I'll let you know. So it's Appreciate tight, it. I'm still working through the process. Thank of you. course. All right. So, Mr. Sharp, it appears that the assault was not a deferral. It was a uh, stipulated order of continuance. Mm -hmm. That's correct, John. All right. Thank you. So we'll note the city's motion to revoke the continuance on the assault charge based on the allegation of a new law violation. And Ms. Langley was counsel of record on that case. Mm -hmm. well, I will. And Mr. Milton is asking not to be represented by counsel. Is that correct? That is correct, Your Honor. Okay, so let's have a little chat about that. If you choose to represent yourself, which is your right, you can make that choice. But I want to make sure that we make a record that you are doing so knowingly and voluntarily. Uh, Ms. Langley is an attorney. I'm going to guess that you have not gone to law school and become a member of the bar. Is that correct? I can neither confirm nor deny that information, actually. This is one of those times where it would be beneficial for you to confirm whether or not you have an education within law. But given how you've been acting, I would say that your education level is well uh, below eighth grade. So you wouldn't be able to really represent yourself too well in a uh, actual trial. So it would probably be better for you to actually get an attorney. But of course, I know you're not. So please carry on with your inane stupidity. Okay. Uh, so not being an attorney... And you understand that if you represent yourself, the court cannot assist you in recognition of the fact that you're not an attorney. So you will end up missing things you're supposed to do. You will do things you're not supposed to do. And all of those things will likely work uh, to your detriment. So it is never a smart thing to represent yourself. And frankly, if an attorney were to say they would represent themselves, I would have the same conversation with them and advise them, I think it's a foolish decision to make. You, however, have that right, as I pointed out. But I want to make sure you understand you have the right to have counsel. You have the right to have me appoint counsel, or you can hire counsel. And if you ask me to appoint counsel, I can appoint counsel at no cost. So you understand all of that. I appreciate that, and I do. Thank you. And how do you choose to go forward? Pro se, please. Okay, Honor. even know the right term, okay? All right, I won't appoint counsel to represent you. You'll have to represent yourself on both cases, the criminal trespass charge and the city's request to revoke uh, these continuance and get a conviction on the assault charge. So that's at risk here with this new allegation. So I want you to be aware of that. Appreciate you. And Mr. Sharp, city's position on release. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd point out that we just resolved that other case on the 22nd of March. Um, that was done in custody. $1,000 was the whole at that time. Um, uh, city's argument for that bail was based on the, the nature of that case being a, an assault as well as, and I think most importantly, the outstanding warrant out of uh, Skagit Superior Court. Um, that warrant is still active. We're here with you know, even more concerning circumstances now with another charge. City's request is $500 bail on each case for a total of 1,000. Law abiding behavior, no contact with the 7 Eleven on uh, Marvin Road, and no consumption of alcohol, marijuana, or non prescribed drugs, nor for frequenting of bars or taverns, as alcohol does appear to have been a factor in this newest case. Thank you. And has anybody checked to see if Skagit County has been contacted regarding executing on their warrant. I don't have any information either way on that, Your Honor. Okay. Well, I, I believe that when, well, I, I, he told me, I, I, I was. Uh, we, no, please don't allow her to speak in my stead. Thank you. No. Okay, I'm going to ask Ms. Langley a question. Ms. Langley, what do you know about the jail's policy in that regard? Um, no, I only know what I learned before is that he had contacted Skagit County and they needed him to appear in person to deal with that warrant. Okay. All right. Um, Your Honor, um, I was 
not read my Miranda rights this most recent time. I believe I'm supposed to request a voyeur of the body cams. <clears throat> like I said, I can't uh, represent you. You're going to have to figure all that out yourself for purposes of okay. today. And here we go. And that's exactly the reason why it is inadvisable for you to represent yourself in a court of law, because he just asked a really basic question. And of course, the judge cannot help him out from this point on, as he stated earlier. So we now know he doesn't know any of the procedures, so which basically means he never went to law school, he never bothered to research anything about the law or procedures in uh, courtrooms, so he's a complete ignoramus to begin with. So yeah, good luck in defending yourself. You're going to need it. Um, I'll require a four to six hours of unhindered internet access so that I can properly represent myself. If you would okay, write you read, that into a court you read order. Read your form on your constitutional rights. Did I read my form? I don't believe I was provided anything. Um, okay. Is there a corrections officer there? Uh, Mr. Upton. Yes, Your Honor. Let's uh, present Mr. Milton a copy of the rights form and have him read it. And then we, he and I can talk about it. Yes, Your Honor. There's one tape to the desk right in front of it. Okay. Why don't you take a minute and read it? Let me know when you're done reading it, Mr. Milton. Appreciate you. <laughs> Oh my goodness, so this idiot had paperwork sitting in front of him this whole time, and he did not read it? Oh my goodness, that has to be the dumbest thing I've ever seen out of a soft tard. Well, maybe not the dumbest thing, but it's certainly a way up there in rank. I haven't been Mirandized, so it's hard for me to even start since I can't technically be charged with anything. And uh, there's no victim in this. Well, somehow I doubt that uh, the officer didn't read you your Miranda rights. And now we have the no victim, no crime fallacy, which is a load of BS. You committed a crime with public intoxication, got trespassed, and now you're here. Why else would you be sitting in that uh, jail with that uniform on? I mean, you're not exactly the sharpest knife in the drawer, are you, dude? Uh, alleged. Crime. Okay, I know all I'm asking right now is for you to read the rights and tell me that you have done so. All right. Uh, would you please silence yourself? Tell you the truth, this guy's starting to get on my nerves. Forgive me. And actually, Ms. Langley, if you'll unmute, because I have some questions for you regarding other cases. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Featheroff or Ms. Featheroff, when do you want to see her again? Um, I think we could probably put her on later this week, maybe on Thursday. We're just trying to see if we can work out a resolution. Okay, so I'll move her case to Thursday, the 6th, and I'll put it straight to 1.30. And that appears to, that's in pre-FTC status, is that right? Yes. Yes. Thank you. I have completed the reading, sir. All right, thank you. I'll talk about that with you in just a moment as soon as I finish this document I'm working on. Thank you. Any question about those rights that are on that form? Not particularly. Okay, thank you. All right, so uh, with the question before the court now is uh, whether I'm gonna hold you on bail. Uh, the city has asked for $500 cash or bond on each case. Just address that issue. Don't address the underlying facts because to the extent that you do so, any statement you, you say regarding that can be used against you on these cases. Okay. So right now, just address the issue of whether you should be released or not. 
Appreciate you. Yes, I would like to request uh, being released on personal recognizance. And uh, the reason being is because there were several things articulated in the statement that were absolutely not true. For one, I was okay, yeah, hold, not yeah, hold in on. possession of a cell phone. No worries. I was not in possession of a cell phone as I had my vehicle, my phone, my computer, my passport, and every physical possession stolen from me last time I was under arrest for defending a senior citizen in this community. The same day that Officer Tittle refused to search the man who stole my key. Okay, anything else? That's it for now. Okay. Uh, unless uh, you would allow me to uh, fill in some details that they failed to read me my Miranda rights, um, and I wasn't taking a statement from in both uh, questioned cases in question. All right, so what the case in of Miranda tells us is that if you make any statements under while under arrest prior or prior to being read your Miranda rights, the prosecutor is limited in its ability to present those statements to the court. It doesn't have any other purpose other than whether something you say that can be used against you. That's the whole purpose of Miranda. Doesn't mean they can't go forward with a criminal charge. Oh, I was never aware of that. Right, which Appreciate is one you. of the reasons you don't want to represent yourself, but. You know, I've I've explained that to you now, but I, I just want to make sure. Uh, so you still wish to represent yourself? Absolutely. Okay. All right. Seem like a sharp guy. So appreciate you, Your Honor. Seem dedicated to it. Okay. Uh, based on the outstanding warrant out of Skagit County, uh, I will hold in five hundred dollars cash or bond bail on each case, total one thousand cash or bond, and I'll remind you you're to have no contact with the Seven Eleven store. Uh, no criminal law violations, not consuming any alcohol and marijuana, not enter any bar or tavern. And give me some my realistic expectation. Uh, are you going to be able to post bail or likely not? You know, um, if the minimum that I'm allowed to throw on a bail is 300 and I have to bail out for two things, then I'm certain I would need to acquire a phone number that I don't have in order to make that happen. And so I would have to say that it may be closer to impossible this time around. Okay. Well, you may know from your history that the bail here is usually 10% of what's ordered. So $50 on each case is what a bonding company would want from you. Mm -hmm. um, so just, I don't cool. know whether well, I have a hundred dollars. Isn't that okay. Nice. All right. Thank you. I will set this for three weeks from today at 1.30 in the afternoon, so on Monday the 24th of April, uh, for what we call a pretrial, uh, Mr. Milton. And at the pretrial hearing, uh, you, you will have received information from the city prior to that as to any offer to settle the case, uh, just so you know you don't have to accept it, they, but they will be contacting you to give you whatever offer they have. And then you'll tell them the court at that time, whether you wish to accept the offer and enter whatever arrangement is made or whether you wish to uh, go to trial. So that'll be what we discuss on the 24th. Awesome. In the meantime, will I be allowed four to six hours of unhindered internet access so that I can represent myself? Yeah, I, I do not uh, regulate the jail. So you're going to have to talk to the folks at the jail. If you write it as a court order, I'm certain that they will be more likely to comply than if you don't. All right, I'll, uh, I, I'm not going to write it as a court order. Like I say, I don't mess with how the jails run their jail, but uh, um, speaking of, by the way, and, uh, Mr. Sharp has um, heard you and we'll on, go for it. On way. a side note, if I may, Your Honor, um, dur during intake, and uh, I, I might preface this with I have gone to anti kidnapping training. Um, I was humane, <laughs> inhumanely subject to what I would define as torturous uh, actions. Uh, it was by CO Patero. Um, I have nothing against the man, but he only sought to escalate a situation physically that could have been de-escalated with a verbal warning, a verbal, hey, knock your stuff off, a verbal, and I was completely compliant physically, as you can see on camera, if you look in holding C on the night that I was in taken, um, and uh, when I was asked to be picked up and seated, they had refused and told me on their paper that they checked on me every 15 minutes when I was checked on about three times the first two hours and about twice in the last half an hour. 
Um, okay. So All right, we got that. Yep, appreciate you. Right. Thank you. And we'll see you on the 24th. Wow, anti-kidnapping classes. I guess he's one of those soft tards who actually believes that he was kidnapped instead of arrested. But whatever. Well, I can tell that uh, this guy's trial is not going to go very well for him. As the old saying goes, a man who represents himself in a court of law has a fool for a client, and this guy definitely acted like a fool throughout the entire thing. And, well, his uh, obvious lack of uh, legal training is certainly not going to be able to help him out in this scenario, despite how much he thinks that he knows the law, which it is clear that he doesn't know jack squat about it, nor does he know anything about procedures within the courtroom. Well, at any rate, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next one.